saving historic mill buildings. First of all, let me give a little introduction. He's right, I, I am uh, Damon Gibbons. I'm from the 4UR Ranch, father of three. Uh, I, my wife and I lived there, and the 4UR Ranch in 1980 bought Colorado Fuel and Irons, Wagon Wheel Gap, Fluorite Mine and Mill. Um, I'm also a board member on the American Mining Foundation. I'm also on the school board here in town. I also play hockey in the wintertime on these two hockey ponds that you see right across here, and I wanted to say thank you to the uh, Willow Creek for, for never really complaining about the fact that we had to dig a couple of hockey ponds to keep ourselves entertained around this area. Uh, we love that. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just a, a strange byproduct of, uh, of mining that we get to use the tailings to, to play hockey in. Anyway, uh, I want to take you on... I love alliteration, so the subtitle is Exploring the Promise and Problems of Preservation on Mines on Private Property. Isn't that fun? Who doesn't love alliteration? You know? <laughs> um, but that's basically what we want to do. But the way to do it is to take you on a little mental uh, mind, mind exercise. So you don't have to close your eyes for this, but just think of your mom and dad for a little bit. Think of your birthday parties that they maybe used to throw you. And think that, imagine that they gave you an old abandoned mine building. Okay? Is there anybody in here who has inherited? Raise your hand if you've inherited an old abandoned mine building. One. Okay. Raise your hand if you have bought one. Oh, boy. All right. Um, so, we, we have one. I'm glad that, that uh, this gentleman's in here. But the majority of us have not inherited them. And so, I'm, I'm kind of representing... Where's my, oh, there's my clicker. Okay, I gotta get used to this. There we go. I'm representing and, and bringing you forth the story of people who have inherited mine buildings. This is the Wagon Wheel Gap Colorado Fuel and Iron Fluorite uh, Mine and Mill. Of course, the mill building's outside the, the mines back there. Um, it was, the original mill building was built in 1919. It's worth asking why is it why does it still exist? This is actually on the ranch. Um, if you if you call us and schedule, I can give you a tour. Um, every once in a while, it is a private uh, ranch. It exists still. It has not been burned down by the public or taken down uh, by an entity uh, because it was on private property. It was held by CF and I all the way until 1980, and then the ranch that owned all the property around it absorbed it. We are a family fly fishing guest ranch. And uh, that's where the, the income stream is. And this hasn't actually produced any fluorite uh, uh, or, or fluor spar uh, since 1950 when it closed down. Uh, there's a, you could look this up. There's a, a great article written by James Copeland in the American Mining Journal on this. It's the definitive article that, that'll tell you all about the, the mine and mill. But we're going to go on a little photo tour uh, of the inside of it. Uh, there's from another angle. Uh, it's just a fantastic thing. On the inside, this is this is still in place. This is a steam engine. There's there's two large steam engines. We'll see them both. What's not still in place is um, boy, you gotta love these things. See that little uh, identification tag? At some point, somebody came in and, and robbed that, um, and it's it's a terrible shame. It happened during my tenure. I, sh I should have been watching out better for the place. I guess boarded up sooner. But there's all sorts of neat stuff in this in this mill, and it's a uh, it's a burden to try to to show people that to keep it open to people on a, a you know on a reservation basis, and and then not have it vandalized or, or something. So it's it's interesting. So yeah, imagine that this was also yours now. That this was you know on your seventh birthday, Dad said, "Oh, this is yours too." Okay, <laughs> so I'm sure there are people who can identify this, and and the uh, regula the regulating instrument on the inside of the flywheel. This is our boiler room. It's well lit, thanks to a failing ceiling. This is the preheating <laughs> unit that I have been told and made to understand is is a, oops, whoops, 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 is a fascinating uh, a piece of uh, of mining engineering. This is, of course, the uh, the ore bins, the ore ore room, the chutes for those. And also, this picture was taken before we did some uh, roof repairs and a stopgap measure to kind of keep the moisture from coming in and ruining this building. So all of this was yours. And you thought to yourself, I'd like to preserve it. And so you went out to get a estimate 
on what it might cost just to stabilize the place. Now we're going to go through this line by line. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to go through this line by line. But it, this is prepared by Waddle and Dobb contractors. We're working with, with them uh, as well as some other firms in Denver uh, to figure out what's going to cost just to stabilize the place. Just the consulting services alone were greater than $60,000. When the estimate was all prepared, $895,000. That's before you take anybody in there. That's before you have interpretive signs. That's before you can take chores or anything like that. That's just to stabilize the structure, the trestle, fix that roof over the boiler. And um, I've, of course, got the owner's permission to share these figures with you, but that's, I, you know, that's... <laughs> That's, that's what you finally got on your 21st birthday from your parents. They said, by the way, this thing that I've given you, if you want to keep it and, and, and do well by it, this is what it's going to cost you. you know, if you want to be a good steward of that, this is what it's going to cost you. So, wow, thanks mom and dad. So, uh, <clears throat> there's, there's other buildings around like that too. Uh, as I mentioned before, I belong to the American Mining uh, Foundation, and uh, we're the American Mining Foundation is currently trying to work on the Commodore Mine as well. That is owned through the Poxen family. This is a picture of the Commodore Mine. It's right up the road. You can see this. I'm sure you're all. If, if you've been to Crete before, you're familiar with this. This is another fantastic photo of the Commodore Mine. The American Mining Foundation's mission is to preserve historic mining sites, making them tourist and educational destinations. Okay. And um, that's proving kind of difficult, as you saw the numbers before, and, and we're, we're getting into this. And uh, I want to call out a couple of people who are helping us here. Jan Jacobs, raise your hand. Jan Jacobs is on the foundation board. Randy McClure, raise your hand. He's on the foundation board with me as well, as, as well as Craig Sparks. And uh, we do have a Facebook page. So if you're making notes, uh, visit our Facebook page. Um, that's how you can contact us or support us. Um, but I want to ask you, where is the incentive to preserve these buildings? You were just, if you were in the, in the place of someone who owned a building like this, you were, uh, you, you were given it. I can tell you from a business standpoint that we have, we have a business there running right next to one of these buildings. And no matter how much money we put in the building, and we are, we have begun preservation efforts. Uh, the excavator is working today, currently, up there, doing some, some water control to try to preserve that mine. That's money out of the owner's pocket, but where's the incentive to preserve that if, if these old historic mine buildings are held in private hands? And how can we create this incentive? So one of the tools that the American Mining Foundation is working on is basically creating an entity which can hold the, uh, the properties for the private party and thereby... Uh, qualified for more public funding of the restoration, renovation, stabilization processes. Um, and, but, but still, even once you do that, you know, where's the big question that you get when you do these grants is what's the public benefit? What's the public benefit? Well, these things exist on private land, so it's tricky, but it can be done. I know the owner of uh, the Wagonwell Gap, uh, CF&I mine, would work with the, the entities that are the grantors to find a public benefit, too. But maybe there's, as you listen to all these things and the concerns that you have in the mining community, maybe there's public benefit, maybe there's benefit to the, the larger mining community of preserving these and of interpreting this for future generations, what our mining past was. Um, I would like to keep, I would like to keep doing this and uh, I would like to come back again and I, I think you as the uh, larger um, mining community should hold us, the American Mining Foundation, uh, to making progress on this issue. I think we also need to reach out to you and say, if you can help, if you, if you see potential um, for this, please reach out to us, you know, help us out any way you can. Um, if we can celebrate our past, then perhaps we can celebrate our future too. Thank you. Are there any questions? Yes. Have you, and maybe you mentioned this, but have you looked into historic preservation easements to help get other funding involved? Does that work? 
Yeah. Have we already looked at the historic preservation easements? Um, I, I, I'm not sure when you say easements. We've looked into historic preservation grantings and funding sources. Yes, absolutely. And that's where we come up with these ideas of the, of the public benefit problem that we run up against, um, access and, and, and things like that. But um, if there are more that you may be aware of, let us know. We, we uh, take them out all the time. There's a, I guess I'm reaching out to the private sector too. There's a Fairbanks Morse three-cylinder hot little diesel engine inside one of the mine buildings there that looks like it's ready to just fire up and go. If you've ever seen a video of these things running, they're fascinating, you know? Um, so there's all sorts of, uh, you know, so maybe Fairbanks Morse would be interested in, in doing that. I don't know. There's, there's all sorts of potential for, for groups that are interested in to get involved. Um, and I'm hoping that the American Mining Foundation provides that conduit. Any other questions? Are you guys a non-profit then? No, the... the mining foundation is Oh, yes, we are a non-profit. Mm -hmm. That's uh, hopefully... Now, the, the landowner, they're not willing to give that property to you. Uh, if, if you own the property, then you'll be able to qualify for the state's That's a non-profit. Right, so the question is, are, are, is AMF a non-profit? Yes, they are. And the question is, were the landowners willing to transfer the uh, profit, uh, the property to AMF. Yes, in a certain legal structure. Keyword being legal, and there are all sorts of legal expenses and, and, and uh, structures that have to be respected as, as you do that. And that's where it gets really expensive. Just in that transfer alone, um, you're talking tens of thousands of dollars of legal fees trying to, trying to structure that and figure that out. Um, but yes, that is the mechanism that, that we are pursuing. Yes? Have you reached out to um, like various school districts and tried to get tools um, for whether it's elementary or middle or high school people coming through? Because that's a good way to get everything out into the public and know that, hey, if my son's going on school field trip for this old mine, maybe I want to be able to do that's, that's a great question. Have we reached out to school districts and, and uh, tried to solicit <coughs> tours? Uh, as you saw by some of the pictures, Touring that mill isn't really safe. Um, I, I mean, you know, that's what we got to brainstorm around is how do we make it safe? And to get to the point where you could tour it, you have to first stabilize it, and that's just shy of, you know, one mill. And so that's where the hang up is. I think we'd all love to go and tour these things, but we take these tours on, on a limited basis, and we have to say, you can't go here, you can go here, watch your step, don't touch that, don't steal that. You know, so, uh, so yeah, we are. Um, I'm on the school board, like I said, I would not feel right, even as a parent, saying, letting someone else take my kid through that mill. We have a policy on the ranch, don't go in the mill, but you know, we, we don't know what's stable and what's not in those floors. So, but it's, but the, the guts of the bones of them are very strong, and caked in oil from all these machines spraying it over them all these years, too. And so there, there's potential there, but still, yeah, it's very expensive. Uh, is the mine on the uh, state registered for historic places? We're hoping it's about to be. That process and, uh, was just shy of the $26,000 um, process in writing the application to get it on there. We got grants for uh, about half of that. Don't quote me on these numbers. but um, So yeah, we're working on it. How about the Commodore? I, I can't speak to that. Jan or Randy, do you know if the Commodore is uh, designated or in the process of designation? in the process as well, yep. Well, thank you very much. Oh, sorry, one more. The situation that you are pointing at is that the only benefit of doing this is probably historic tourism. And you can't possibly raise enough money by charging fees or anything to pay for this. I think they're restoring the Paris Bill in Park County at a cost far greater than this. Mm -hmm. And they're doing it on the basis of tourism. Their only hope, I think, is to appeal to, like, the State Historical Society or a group like that, provide you with a stipend because you can't possibly get enough from from uh, charging admission. I think you're absolutely right, and, and you point to a good point that it's it's never going to be a self-sustaining thing based on tourism. There's not that much interest. But what we're finding is that the financial hurdles are so big. We need not only do we need it to be, to have some, some cash flow, but we also need uh, 
we may need uh, industry who, who want to tour their employees and just kind of help the public image of mining by by keeping some of this old history alive and, and pointing to our heritage there. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah.